All right. Um, welcome to bit six F one one one. The uh, first thing I would like to tell you is that uh, uh, this x is for edX and the course material for this uh, will be available for you on the edX platform. A um, couple of lectures from now, uh, we're going to have you, uh, one of our students actually, coming and giving an introduction of how to use this platform. Essentially, a lot of the material will be available to you on this platform and hopefully it will help you to you know, do better in the course. Uh, the, I'm the IC for the course, Sai Jagan Mohan. And uh, my partner in crime in this venture is uh, Tapumai. I think he's somewhere. Where is he? Ah, there he is. Tapumai Guha Sarkar. And um, we have a tutorial team. Uh, we are putting in a lot of effort in the tutorials. And uh, we do hope that uh, it's going to be a very interactive tutorial. And uh, we'll tell you more about this. We're having a lot of uh, hope on the tutorials. That will be effective. But we'll get back to you on this. I think we already sent you a mail, uh, which gave you some initial information. So we'll start uh, with the course. Let me see. I will uh, start with a joke. It says, uh, this is some uh, quote picked up from a uh, Russian literature. It says, introduce public education with moderation. And that's not the joke. Avoiding bloodshed if possible. So we'll try to keep that in mind, though I can't promise you that. What do we want to do? Okay. This is an important question. Definitely, we want to know what we want to do in this course. And uh, it's um, something that you must understand very well. So we'll spend some time on it. We seek to understand the properties of materials. That is the goal of this course. So already, you can easily understand that it's an important um, aim to understand the properties of materials. because. I mean, you can, uh, in your everyday experience, you have, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is cars, aeroplanes, you know, moving very fast, gas turbines, rotate, uh, operating at high temperatures, going on for thousands and thousands of cycles, and evading failure. And you want the whole uh, venture to succeed, you definitely must be able to understand the properties of the materials. High speed cutting tools. Uh, chemical engineering, you have 50 meter distillation columns, 70 meter distillation columns, you know, under high uh, columns facing highly corrosive atmosphere and able to uh, work without failure. On a different scale, you must be uh, commonly hearing buzzwords like micro mechanical systems, nanomaterials, um, microchips. Now, all of these things, if they have to succeed, you will find a materials expert who is responsible for the success. Uh, in my own uh, area, uh, my, some of my students, uh, they're trying to understand the uh, flow of uh, blood through you know, arteries. Intuitively, it's obvious to you that you need to understand the behavior of blood, the properties of blood, uh, which is not quite like water. It's a little more complicated fluid. And uh, you also need to know how arteries are going to behave. And that is, uh, these biomaterials are truly complex. So having said this and um, talked about the importance of uh, understanding the property of materials, the fact that they can be very complex, I must uh, a priori let you know that in this course, we'll mostly spend most of our time, uh, not most of, at least less than half of our time on just the perfect gas. And the remaining part of our time, we'll try to graduate a little bit 
and talk about water. Okay, I don't see us discussing um, more complex materials. Um, uh, you can talk about uh, the materials. I mean, gases, liquids, and solids. Um, you must have heard of materials which have a memory. Okay, they can remember how they were loaded previously, and these sort of materials uh, can be used uh, to design very clever things. And you must have heard this word, smart materials. If you haven't heard of them, you can look it up. All, all said and done, yeah, it is important, but uh, we will be sticking to understanding steam, water. But with that example, we can discuss power plants, and that will be a major portion of our engineering applications. Okay, so how do you, you know, want to understand the properties of materials? You could think, now that we know uh, quite a bit about the microscopic picture, you might think we should attempt this problem via the microscopic properties. Okay, what would this would mean is uh, you need to keep track of an enormous number of uh, molecules of the order of Avogadro's number. Intuitively, it is obvious to you uh, that the situation gets quite complicated very quickly for most problems of importance. So, uh, my colleague uh, T.G. S. will spend the first few lectures of the course talking to you more about the microscopic picture. But as far as I'm concerned, I need to avoid this. Okay? Uh, and we've already said that uh, the problem is complicated. That's what it says. So given the fact that uh, the problem is complicated and this is not an option, The grand question is, uh, what do I do now? I do have a serious problem. I'm just faced with this complicated problem. All I write, know right now is that it's very important. Okay, so just digress a bit. And instead, um, let's discuss um, in general, what would I do if I'm faced with a complex situation? Maybe I'll just give you an example. I could just ask you, I could just ask you, what's the value of x? And you might think that, well, this is not a complex problem. Um, it could still be if you're in primary school or you're in kindergarten. It could still be a complex problem for him. But it's not too difficult for me to come up with something that you will think is complex. Um, it's easy to just combine all the very uh, difficult functions we know and come up with a problem. Uh, maybe exponential, trigonometric, convert it into a polynomial with an irrational coefficient, put in some inverse tan functions. <laughs> And then ask you, ask you what? Ask you what? The value of x. But if you think that the situation is complicated, I could make it a little worse for you. Uh, maybe I am a villain in the Batman movie, and uh, I just take this guy as a hostage. And then I say that I could finish him off unless, unless what? <laughs> unless he tells me the value of x in two minutes. Even better. Oh, okay, maybe you guys are allowed to help him now. So all of you have two minutes. Yeah, come on, go ahead, save him. What are you going to do? Uh, the clock is ticking. Huh? What will you do? Say something. You don't care about him. You don't know him. <laughs> he doesn't seem to worry about himself. He's smiling.
What are you going to do? Okay, say something. At least make an attempt, man. What do you do? Sorry? You have nothing with you. You're just standing there now. And there's one minute, one minute to go. It has come without warning. The whole problem has come without warning. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, somebody said something. Okay, the time is running out. 15 seconds left, man. Do something. Come on. What will you do? Huh? Okay, so here's the answer. What did he say? Okay, so he says that he'll make a guess. All right, so he makes, uh, I will just put in one more word. He makes an intelligent guess. Uh, he's a sharp fellow. He'll make a quick intelligent guess. Now, that has distracted me. And I'm going to give him now two more minutes. So he gets two more minutes now, thanks to your response, thanks to your guess. How will you know that your guess is right or wrong? Somebody said he'll guess, yeah. How will you know whether your guess is right or wrong? He will substitute it there and check whether his guess is... Okay, and suppose you find that the guess is wrong. What will you do? Huh? Try another guess. Great. So that is exactly what I want to convey. So given a complex situation, this is what you will do. You will guess and then you will guess again. All right. So at this stage, I'd like to play a video for you. This is a lecture by Feynman. Uh, this lecture was given at um, Cornell University in 1964, just one year before he got the Nobel Prize. Uh, the first three minutes are just for you to get used to the accent. And after that, I'll play around nine minutes, which uh, is relevant to our discussion. So I would say you can see the rest of the video at home. Uh, we'll just continue. Let's see what we have uh, as a take-home message from this. Venture boldly with an intelligent guess and discover loss. You have to do it if you have to make any headway into facing your complex situations. And uh, what is it about these laws? Um, they, can never pre they can never be proved to be right. They can only be proved to be wrong. But they are, we will take them as true till they're proven wrong and continue uh, to use them. And what does it mean to use them? This bold leap, that is your guess, now has to be combined with very clever reasoning. Okay, that is going to be, these two things are going to be the major part of the course. The bold leap for us will be the laws of thermodynamics. It's a very intelligent guess as to laws that are not wrong, that have not proved to be wrong yet. But what follows after that is fairly rigorous reasoning. I want you to keep this in mind that that's an important part of the course. Please uh, have a look at the rigor that will follow the loss. Okay, and when we achieve this, uh, we can be in store for a few pleasant surprises. So what I want to do is uh, exemplify all of this with a good example. The example that I will take is um, dimensional analysis. It's a fairly deep, um, important thing that you should know. And uh, let's see. So dimensional analysis, the whole dimensional analysis will depend on an intelligent guess, which is what we will call the law. So the law here, which of course we can never prove to be true and which hasn't been proven to be wrong till now and hence we will use it, is as follows. The formula of physics are independent of dimension.
that's it. And you can quickly see that it is very general. Whatever we are going, if at all we are going to do some clever reasoning and draw some conclusions, it's going to be completely general. And hence it's valid in almost all the situations that we might face. Uh, just try to explain to you what exactly do we mean by this. So here is a physical law. What we mean by saying that this physical uh, physics formula does not depend on dimensions is as follows. If I give you an examination in which you are supposed to use this formula, I wouldn't worry too much about what? About the units that you are going to use. You can use if you want CGS units. If you, if you want, you can use but what is going to remain the same? The formula. That's the simple meaning of this statement. Okay. Now what follows is very clever reasoning. And in the end, as you will hopefully agree, we'll end up with a pleasant surprise. Okay. So let's see. So here's the example. It's an illustration, remember. But uh, there are a lot of things to learn from this example. Okay. So, the complex problem for me is as follows. Just assume this problem is complex. Assume you don't know anything. So, I have a simple pendulum with the length L, mass mm -hmm. M. And on some planet, G. And I would like to know what is the time period. I'm going to make a guess. Since I don't know anything, I'll make a guess. I just, well, this could go wrong. But it's all right, we have to start somewhere. All right, it's a complex situation for me. I'm willing to work hard, okay? And uh, so I might decide, okay, I'm ready for hard work. It's like I want to understand the properties of materials. I'm willing to work hard. I'm willing to do a few experiments. So maybe I'll say, okay, length from 0 to 10 is important. Mass from uh, whatever, 1 gram to 10 grams is important. G from this uh, range is important. And I'll do a few experiments. Let's say I divide each of my ranges into 10 parts. How many experiments do you think I should perform to get the complete information in this uh, range of uh, dimensions? How many? No, no, each, each of these uh, domain is divided into 10 pieces. Length is divided into, suppose it depended only on length. And you divided the length into 10 pieces, how many experiments would I have to perform? 10. Now, suppose the variables are 2 in number, length into 10 pieces and mass into 10 pieces. How many experiments do you have to perform? 100. So, a priori it looks like we have to perform how many experiments here? 1000. And if I perform these experiments diligently, I definitely have a lot of information about what I am seeking. Okay. But however, I still have with me something. What is that? Some, some law. law. Now the question we ask ourselves is, have we, so we believe in the law. We have no reason to think it's wrong. But the question we need to ask ourselves before we start our hard work is, have we realized the full implications of our, of our law? Implications, ramifications, Okay, because some of it may be actually useful and it may reduce our work. So now we need to follow up this law with very clever reasoning and realize the full implications of this law. So let's carry that out. Okay, uh, this is important. It might be new to some of you. 
or most of you. So pay careful attention because uh, this is something that you must understand well. It's simple, but it is, uh, no, it's very general and uh, it's all encompassing. Okay, and it is something that you will use again and again and again. And of course in our course. So I start with um, manipulation. Okay. What has happened with, because of this manipulation is the LHS has become, yeah, say it loudly, dimensionless. Okay, and you will readily agree that if t is a function of this, then this LHS is also some function, a different function of L, M, and G. And if this is right, then this is also true. If this is true, then this is true. Okay, some other function. Okay. Now, um, we still don't know what this function is. But let's just assume that uh, we know it. And I give you a problem in the exam. Where you're supposed to use this formula. Okay. Now, let's take up a case one. So, this problem has appeared in the exam. Whole class and then, then this 50 percent class and the 50 percent class. Everybody uses the same use it, uh, uses the same unit for length. Everybody uses the same unit for time. But 50 percent of the class, there is a bifurcation in the units of mass. You got this? Everybody uses the same unit for length and time, but there is half the class has used a different unit for mass. So let's see what happens when they use the formula. The input for L is the same for the entire class. Uh, this G is um, length over T square. So the input for G is same for the entire class, but the half the class has a different value for M. And half the class has a different value for m. What about the answer? The whole class gets the same answer. Why? Because the LHS is independent of dimension. So at this stage, you have an important conclusion. What is that? What is the conclusion? Can you tell me with a minute's thought? You understood the situation? So what can you conclude now? F star is independent of? Already you can see that if you kick this mass out, your experiments have reduced from 10 cube to? For nothing. Only what you did, you used a law and then followed it up with? Followed, it up, followed up your law with? Clever reasoning. Okay, that's an important, uh, you know, simplification for us. F star is independent of M. So now I can take this M out. Okay, now case two is Everybody uses the same unit for L and 50% change their units in time. So what you have is everybody has the same input for L and again half the class has a different input for G and G. LHS is again same. What is the conclusion? F star is independent of? Independent of? And of course, you know the final case three. What will you conclude after that? It's independent of L. So the RHS is actually a. Having come to this stage, how many experiments do you have to perform? Just one. 
and you got your answer for every planet. Right? With just one experiment. Please keep in mind, nothing you can do with this sort of argument will give you the value of will give you the value of C can only be got from experiments. We are not saying in thermodynamics that you will be in a situation where you will be away from away from experiments or your attempt to study the properties of materials will always involve experiments. Only thing we are saying is if you use the laws of thermodynamics and realize the full implications of those laws, the full ramifications of those laws, you will be carrying out the minimum number of experiments. That is the philosophy of the course. That is the aim of the course. All right? Great. So we got this uh, main point across, which is clever reasoning is required to realize the restrictions imposed by these laws of physics. This restrictions is often useful in a complex situation. Now, in this case, uh, the restriction is that 2 by root L by G has to be constant. Okay, so that's what we mean by restriction. Okay, now at this stage, uh, let's look at the definition of thermodynamics. We have just gone through everything that will help us to define what is the subject all about, and it comes from uh, great people. Let's have a quick look. Huh, by the way, this course is all about two remarkable guesses by Mr. Sadi Karno and his really fine reasoning. Both are important part of the course. Feynman lectures, uh, Feynman mentions that this line of reasoning would count as one of the finest all-time uh, reasoning ever in history. And uh, the course gives you an opportunity to see how he thought about things. And that's an important part of your education. It's not about just materials. It's about how he reasoned things out. And uh, what he realized is, the, no, he not only realized what to guess, and his guesses were uh, dependent on his experiments on heat engines. So, this classical thermodynamics predates our understanding of uh, materials as atoms and molecules in the kinetic theory. And uh, what he realized, or he guessed the two laws purely based on his experiments on heat engines. So those days, the uh, heat engines with a remarkably low efficiency, 2 to 3 percent, it bothered him. And uh, he looked at them closely and he was able to guess the laws of thermodynamics. And not just that, he was able to realize this, uh, the full ramifications of this. And the full ramifications of these laws are that there are astonishing relationships between the properties of matter. And with that behind him, it reduces his number of experiments and it increases his chance of understanding the properties that he wants to understand via, via his experiments. So here's the definition. The determination of the relationships among the various properties of materials without knowing their internal structure, that is without going into the details of the molecular structure is the subject of thermodynamics. Here is uh, um, uh, another definition in perhaps the most famous textbook of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is a study of the restrictions on the possible properties of matter that follow from the symmetry properties of the fundamental laws of physics. I could give you what this means. So this is the restriction. This is the restriction and it's useful. It follows from the follows from the law of law of say it's fun, fundamental laws of physics. And now let's see what the symmetry means. Let's go intuitively. So you have a you know, square. It's a symmetric. Why is it symmetric? Because you rotate it by 90 degrees and you still get a square. 
anything that remains the same after some transformation is uh, called symmetric. Now, the law of phys uh, the this formula of physics, this particular formula, is invariant or it doesn't change with change in change in no no dimensions. So the way to say it is, it is invariant to changes in scale of mass, length and time. And anything that is invariant to some change is a, is a symmetry. And the use of this symmetry or to realize the restriction of the symmetry gives you relationships which are useful. Is that okay? So that's what uh, approximately this means. Now I'll give you a few examples of this properties. Uh, see, it's again I'm telling you, you will not be able to figure out everything. You'll only get relationships which will reduce your experiments. So I would like to give you some of the examples of the proper use of the laws of thermodynamics, which we will do in this course. And you'll quickly realize what is it that we're saying. So here are a few examples. For ideal gases, we will be able to prove that the first law and the second law followed by followed by clever reasoning will enable us to conclude that Cp is a function only of temperature, Cv is a function only of temperature for a ideal gas and the difference will always be R. You see Cp will change, Cv will change but the difference will always be R. So I do a few experiments. I figure out the value of Cp and I get Cv absolutely free of effort thanks to the fact that I have realized the ramifications of ramifications of, of the laws of thermodynamics which is what we want to learn in this course. Is it clear? All right. Then, uh, during phase transformations, uh, there is a very famous equation, uh, you must have heard of it, clausius clapeyron uh, Topome will be giving you a lot of details about this topic of, very interesting topic of phase transformations. In particular, we will concentrate, like I said, on yeah, yeah, say it. water, we will concentrate on water. He will probably tell you a lot of things about phase transformations of water. But uh, here is a equation, clausius clapeyron Let us briefly look at it. Okay, what you see on the right is that there is a phase transformation and uh, the vapor pressure changes with temperature. As you change the temperature, the, temp the pressure at which this phase transformation takes place changes. And you would like to know how the pressure changes with change in temperature. But if you look on the LHS, you see that L is the latent heat of vaporization, T is the temperature and this V is the specific volume of the gas phase and VL is the specific volume of the liquid phase. Now you can quickly see that uh, which one will be more, VG or VL? VG. So you can probably kick out whom from that uh, relationship? VL. So VL can go, okay? You can keep VG. But you can quickly see that everything on the LHS can be easily, everything on the LHS can be easily uh, measured by a experiment. And with these few measurements, you get some very useful information on the RHS because there is a relationship between the properties of properties of materials which came as a gift from, from our understanding of the laws of Thurman. Very clear? So, uh, we'll look at a final example. Uh, which will also be a part of this course and um, this is called the Joule-Thomson expansion. Now what happens here is you probably take some gas and you pass it through a throttle wall. So there is a drop in pressure and typically what happens is that 
this whole process takes place very fast. There isn't any time for heat transfer. And it will be easy for you to show that this whole process is enthalpic. This H stands for the fact that this whole process is isenthalpic. Enthalpy remains constant. And when you do that, uh, not always, but many times, there is a drop in temperature. And this is, uh, this is, this is used in uh, refrigeration to create low temperatures. Now, what you would like to know is uh, what is the fall in temperature or will it fall at all by change in pressure through throttling. But you have a nice ramification of the laws of thermodynamics which says that this is equal to, this is related to uh, specific heat, specific volume and change in volume with temperature at a constant pressure. I am always happy to do an experiment at constant pressure. It is not too difficult. And what is, what is it that I am trying to convey? Everything on the right hand side can easily be measured and you have a very useful information that will help you to uh, create low, low, low temperatures. Okay, so I think this is about it. Um, this is what I wanted to convey. I think um, it's pretty clear. Um, like I said, um, we'll give you more information on the tutorials. Um, you already got the tutorial sheet. We have a lot of expectations from your involvement in the tutorials. So please come back to us if it is not working out as we think it should be working. Uh, I'm, as far as I'm, today I'm done, TGS will uh, tell you what he wants to teach in the next class. And then he will start his portion. And then after he finishes his part of the portion, then I'll pick up again from there. Basically, uh, I don't want to say what he's going to talk about. So wait for the next class. Thank you. <laughs>